You're listening to Beans and Dice, a podcast about how we game. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Beans and Dice podcast. Uh, I'm Carlos Cabrera. Rob Childers. And we're a podcast about how we game. So what does that mean? Uh, we don't, you know, we're really not going to do a podcast about uh, board game reviews, you know, what to buy, what not to buy. Uh, we're gonna, we're not going to do a podcast about how to play games. Uh, there's so many podcasts and video chats out there that do that so much better than we could ever. Right. Um, but what we're going to do is talk about how we game. You know, right. Uh, our game group here in Tampa, Florida. Yeah. Uh, how we enjoy the games that we have, and and the, the fun that we have, and hopefully share with you all, you all, uh, our enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. For board gaming. Yeah. Maybe get you to join in a bit. And I think we discussed that the idea when we kind of kicked this off was that, you know, we always talk about games when we finish a game session. You know, we find ourselves sitting around with the uh, the guys in the game group and we just kind of chat about the way the game went. And then as we go on, we kind of expand into other stuff that we've heard recent, recent news, new game releases, stuff like that. Just stuff we normally chat about anyway. And uh, we decided why not just turn on a couple of mics and, and put it on on camera and just see if people are interested in, in hearing about stuff we'd like to talk about anyway. So, yeah. And we're still very much in a beta phase. Yeah. You know, we're, oh, yeah. We're, <laughs> I'm learning a lot <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, about what it takes to produce a podcast or even um, adding the video component, I think, is where I'm growing the most. Yeah. Audio, video, editing, all that good stuff. So I yeah. really want to get to a place where the audio of the podcast is worth listening to on its own, Yeah. you know, as mm-hmm. a podcast without the video component. And that's where you might see something different here. I've picked up a mixer board and some... Uh, yeah. Professional microphones, just to get that some snazzy new equipment here to see uh, see how this works out. Get yeah. that 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 <laughs> NPR sound. Oh yeah, going big time. Yeah. <laughs> so we're glad glad to have you back. Uh, yeah. I'm I've been out for a little bit of the gaming scene. Yeah, yeah, you have been a little yeah. over a month. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been dealing with an injury and getting recovered on that. So. I'm I'm feeling a little bit better now. Yeah, haven't put out anything out in a little while, so uh, people started asking, so we figured we better get back on it. So uh, you're still going through some things, but uh, but hopefully getting to feeling better. So mm. yeah, I finally got out for the first time in over a month. Oh yeah, got out to mm. to uh, the shop uh, for our. So this, I guess this is what we'll talk about our uh, what we've been up to yeah. segment. Sure, that's, that's what yeah. we'll lead off with every podcast is what we've been up to. Yeah, uh, and and that leads me to my first time getting out in over a month. Yeah. Uh, we got out after, I think, the, the Crokinole tournament that we had in no- in October. It's probably October, yeah. I think yeah, it was, it was October. October. Yeah. Over at Armada Games, yep. So in December, this past weekend, uh, we did the uh, Christmas, or the December group meetup for our group that we have here in Tampa. Yep, first weekend of December, first Saturday, yep. Uh, you came up with the idea to do a gift exchange. Yeah, yeah, I figured, uh, you know, hear about uh, all the BGG does theirs and, and different uh, big game companies, big game groups uh, do a little gift exchange. So I just figured it'd be fun. We've got about, what, 30 or 40 people in our uh, in our Facebook group now that uh, that we can call on for games. And I just heard, hey, that's enough people. We could probably get enough interest. So just in the in the chat, the IM chat, I just uh, posted to see, you know, what the interest would be, if see if people would be uh, into something like that. And, uh, th- yeah, several people jumped right on it. And so... Uh, it turned out to be a real good thing. I, it was your idea, I think, definitely to do the 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 white elephant type gift exchange. So the uh, the open a gift or steal a gift thing. So that's always fun, and uh, it was a ball. I mean, we had a good time. I don't know. It probably took us what thirty forty five minutes. We had yep. Was it about uh, fourteen fifteen people? Fifteen people. Fifteen people. Yeah. Fifteen people participated. Yeah. And uh, we did it at uh, the Strange Realms uh, game shop in uh, in Tampa. Uh, Shane was uh, uh, nice enough to host us over there, and he participated, so he jumped in on the gift exchange, and so uh, uh, it was a good time. You know, and, and w- when we did that gift exchange idea, when we originally set it up, uh, my, my thought was, hey, it'll be fun. We take some games off the shelf that we don't like anymore, uh, maybe even some stuff that's just bad. Yeah, you know, yeah. We talked about a, what a twenty five dollar range, twenty twenty five dollar yeah. range. So I expected some garbage. Oh yeah, games in mm-hmm. there, uh, but once we started unwrapping, yeah, jeez, uh, there was definitely some chat about it before. There was definitely some conversation on the on the on our chat group that uh, that people had uh, had posted whether or not. Uh, well, I, I should say that a few people were pretty adamant that they didn't want to participate if there was a chance of them walking away with just you know straight garbage, and so. Uh, 
uh, that was definitely something that came up. So I think in you know in light of that, uh, people took it pretty serious. And so I think setting a few of those ground rules, uh, you know, we had said something around you know again a twenty five dollar value or more, uh, a lightly used game that maybe you just hadn't played a lot um, that that would get a, a nice home somewhere else where somebody else might play it. Uh, I think people kind of really respected those rules. The only thing I might think of for next year is we may uh, look at. Um, uh, maybe some kind of BGG rating. I know as we did the uh, the gift exchange, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, I was yelling out the uh, the BGG ratings on each of the games as people opened them up, uh, just so people get an idea of what the what the good games were. We had a few, uh, uh, I wouldn't say non gamers, but new to gaming guys there, so they really didn't know one from another, and so it kind of gave them a, a feel for what the good games were and maybe what some of the other lesser good games were, so they kind of knew uh, what they might want to steal or what might want to take, but. Uh, uh, I think maybe next year if we set something you know in the top fifteen hundred uh, as a parameter of uh, of the games for the exchange. That's a bit high, fifteen hundred. Yeah. Well, I don't know that there were too many below that. I, I just yeah. don't think that we yeah. did have any bad. Yeah. Well, not okay. So I got I pulled up the photo here well, yeah. of the event to mm-hmm. kind of see the the games that that were exchanged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, Istanbul. No, oh, Istanbul was the hot one. That was yeah. a, a in shrink copy somebody had bought and uh, had put that in the uh, in the exchange. But that was the That's one that pretty good. L- uh, Lord of the Rings, the uh, adventure card game. Yep, that was one that I brought. Fantasy yep. Flight Games. Yep, I think one twelve on BGG's ranking uh, at that time. So yeah, the new Civilization from FFG. Yep, Bur- a pretty new game. It's uh, just recently out. Yep. Chronicles of Crime. That was that was a surprise. That was a hot one. A couple people jumped on that. That got stolen a couple times right off the bat. Yep, uh, and and I know you and I. Brought extras, yeah. That way, folks that were there were a couple newer of, to the yep. community didn't have games, right? To couple be able of to give away. Guys were were concerned that they they wanted to participate, but they they were just starting their collection, and so they didn't have any of those lesser played uh, older games around. So they yeah. didn't have anything they didn't like yet. Right, right, right. Yeah. Where you look behind us, and mm. you know you're you're in my house this time. Uh, last few times we've been at Rob's. Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's my game collection. There's plenty of stuff there. that doesn't get played. Uh, so that's what I ended up bringing uh, a Golem Arcana and uh, in one more game, uh, Space Cadets Dice Duel. Oh, yeah. that's um, I ended up with that, actually. So that was... Uh, <laughs> oh, so it's still in the group, then. <laughs> yeah, still in the group. That's what I figured. Close. Yeah, we knew, I knew we liked that game. As you mentioned, when we were there, we just have had a trouble getting eight people together. That's a game you really need eight people, four on four. And so... Uh, but I figure what I'll do is start bringing that maybe to some of our uh, uh, monthly meetups, and I'm sure we can get eight people to play. See, so. and the reason I decided on that one was mm-hmm. because I feel like Sonar... Yeah, it really it, takes that spot. Yeah, for sure. I think Sonar, it's a, it's a slightly different itch. There's no dice in Sonar. I mean, that's just straight-out strategy. Uh, the, the dice duel cadets, uh, space cadets, is definitely one that uh, there's some strategy in it, but there's also some luck. But it takes rolling, some gamers so. to play that one. So oh, yeah, yeah. Or Sonar, I think you can just grab any old man off the street. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, and teach that one. Yep. Uh, Chronicle of Crime, that was a surprise. Kingdom Builder was in there. Uh, you brought the Star Wars. Risk with. Star Wars, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's uh, I was a little on the fence about that one. It's got lots of little mini pieces and stuff. And me and my uh, 16-year-old have played that several times. But I, I asked him before. I said, "Would you be too heartbroken if I brought that?" And he said, "No, no, no. We've played it, and and you know, it's kind of done its thing." So uh, we, we, he was okay with me getting rid of that one. So I didn't even think about that. Arby enjoying that game too because I played it with yeah. you and I liked it. Oh yeah, it yeah. was on my list to steal. Oh really? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But but the game that I ended up taking, uh, Mike. Mike Lorenzo, he, he oh, yeah. brought um, <laughs> a kit. He took a bunch of different games and promos Bundled for games them. Yeah. and a calendar from Board Game Tables, I believe it is. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. That mm-hmm. was a Kickstarter mm-hmm. and bundled it all up into a kit. And I... I mean, when I had my chance to steal Well, it. I stole that originally. I took it the first time, and I, I, take I it knew from it you? wouldn't. So you did. Yeah. You, at the very, very end, uh, you took it from me. So, uh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, oh, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one, though. Uh, Core, Core Worlds, I think, was in the yes. top 120 or something of all time. Yeah, there it is on my shelf. Core yeah, Worlds yeah. now. So I'm, I'm looking with for, the promos. But since, again, it's in the group here, you've got it. We can definitely play that. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to try to get that one to the table. I'm Get looking forward to doing that again next year. I really yeah. think that's a good way to oh, yeah. to uh, the the smiles that we saw, the, the the actual joy that we saw in the in the group as we were stealing from each other and strategizing how to end up with it. Yeah, um, and then the ability to within our group. Just kind of shuffle some of these games around that just don't get love on our shelves. Yeah. But they're still part of the group. Absolutely. 
Yeah, it's uh, yeah. So they're all there, and they're not going too far away. So if we ever want to play any of those games again, we can always uh, borrow or or have somebody bring it to a game meetup. So uh, I, I I felt comfortable with the the fact that they weren't ever going too far away. So that was good, and uh, yeah, it was it was good times. And and again, it'll introduce some new people, especially the the I think there were two or three pretty new gamers that we had that came out that are only been gaming for a couple of months or so and so it really kind of introduced them to some different types of games because the variety of games we had we had card build uh deck builders we had uh uh you know uh, simple uh board games like you know kind of like star wars risk that's not like risk at all but it's uh it's a pretty simple uh type board game but uh we had kind of covered the gamut so mm-hmm. no i think i think it was a hit we're gonna do it again yep uh, we had i think maybe 16 17 show up to this event mm. uh, which is a good about number right. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean when you think about uh december christmas time on. yeah it's there were definitely some people in the group who mentioned that, that you know the december was going to be tough for them to make it but uh most of our regulars got there there was a few uh of the guys who have been pretty regular who didn't get out but uh yeah and then we even had uh uh, it was at least one uh, female uh, gamer that came out. Stella. Uh, Stella. Gustavo okay. and Stella came. Okay. Um, yeah. I believe they know Muhammad. Okay. Uh, they came across the bridge from the, the St. Pete area. Yeah. Um, that's great. We haven't had too much of that in our group. So uh, they had two of, they brought two games with them, party style games. Right. Yeah. Uh, and both of them got played. I know you played one or both of them. I played one. I played one of them. Okay. Yeah, so I played uh, Epic Spell Wars. Epic Spell Wars. Okay. Uh, it's a 2012 game. Which is uh, it's, a, it's kind of a uh, a battle royale uh, card game, okay? Where you're attacking your your people adjacent to you across the table. I think there was eight or nine of us in that one. Game. It seemed like there was, yeah, it was a pretty big table. Yeah, yeah, we mm-hmm. the table was full, and you're throwing spells at each other from across the board, doing damage. It's very random, very oh, yeah. fun, just kind of craziness. See what happens, uh, type of a game. Um, they also brought uh, Secret Hitler. They played that. Okay. Uh, but I was glad to see that their games got played. So we talked about new people coming to the group who are yep. n- newer to gaming. Mm. And you know they got to have their games played and share their passions. But they also got to play games with us from our collections to kind of expand, like you said, their their horizons on, on new games. I got to ask about Secret Hitler. I've been uh, hearing a lot about that one. Did you watch them play that? Or? I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was she, wondering. She yeah. described it as very similar to Coup. Okay. So mm-hmm. um, where uh, someone is playing the role of Hitler and then uh, the fascists have to help keep him in power and okay. then uh, yeah. the, the liberals have to try to find him and get him out. Mm. Uh, but nobody knows who anyone is. Mm. Uh, so almost like uh, resistance. Okay, yeah. Where you're resistance, voting yeah. on certain agendas, and then dep- depending on who you sent to vote and how the vote resolved, determined on who you sus- you know who you're suspicious of. Yeah. Okay. So mm. they had they had a rousing time. I, I saw them laughing over there. Oh yeah, they were they were pretty rowdy for that one. So that was good. Yeah. It was good to see them get their party games played that they brought. It, it's mm. it's a rough feeling when you show up into a new group. Oh yeah, and you bring your games that you're mm-hmm. excited about, and maybe nobody plays them. Nobody wants to play. <laughs> right, yeah. it's a rough feeling. So yeah. I was really yeah. glad to see that the group just you know say you know what let's give these a try. Cool. And I I tried Spell Wars. I I had a we had fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if it's a game that I would bring to the table. I don't know if it's a game that I would buy, um, but I definitely had fun playing it. Yeah. It, it more of the group than the game. And I got to teach one of my all-time favorites, uh, Imperial Settlers, not the newest one, not the uh, Empires of the North. Uh, it's the old uh, old school, original Imperial Settlers, but uh, uh, Mike Lorenzo had uh, recently bought online a copy of the base game with a couple of the expansions. Um, I brought my copy. We actually ended up playing my copy, which has a couple of the expansions built in, or uh, mixed in, just the cards, uh, none of the, uh, the new races. Um, but uh, I got a, a chance to teach. Uh, four of us played that. Uh, Lonnie and uh, and Josh uh, played with us, and so they were both first timers. There was actually three first timers, and I was teaching it. And I really enjoy teaching that game. That's probably one of my top all uh, five uh, all time games. Um, 
touching again on uh, uh, Empires of the North. Uh, that's the new one that uh, a lot of people are saying is replacing Re- Imperial Settlers. I haven't played that yet. I've uh, seen a playthrough online. I've seen a lot of reviews of it. It's it's doing really well. Uh, a lot of people again saying it's a replacement. I, I, just in what I've seen, it's hard for me to imagine as a replacement. I just it seems like a different uh, type of game, a different pace, different some different strategy in it. But uh, again, Imperial Settlers is one of my one of my all time favorites. But uh, yeah, we had a great time. I uh, finished uh, was either second or third. I never win that game, but that's a mark of a good game. I think is that uh, I, I enjoy playing it every time, even when I'm not winning. So it's like, uh, it's like me with Scythe. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I love it. I own it all, but I never win. Yeah, yeah. And you got all the fancy bits and all that stuff, but uh, but it's good. It's because yeah. it's a good game. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind playing and lose. losing. So yeah, that's for sure. That was the only game that I got in. I had to leave uh, a little early, so I just did that in the gift exchange. I know another one that was played. I don't think either one of us got in on it, but uh, Shogun. That's been a big. Um, I've seen that at the table yeah. for the last three events. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, and you've missed a couple of the events, and it's been on every event, so it's even been the ones you haven't been at. And I know uh, Chester Harris, uh, another guy from our group, uh, he played it, I think, one time about two months ago, and every time I talk to him since then, he's uh, he's asking if I can borrow somebody's copy, if I can <laughs> if I can get it to the table. So, I think there's yeah. four or five copies in our group now. Yeah, uh, at least four. Yeah, I know we've I know. got at least four I've now. I've got a copy so. now. Yeah. Uh, I think Will has... Two copies. Will has two. He's got the big box that he just got, and then he's got the original Barry's with the expansion. Got Barry's got a copy. Lonnie picked up a copy. That's right. Lonnie's got that a copy. That says a lot about Shogun, and yeah. it, it's a it's a cube tower game. So yeah. it's, it's very yeah. different, um, you know, way to play a game. Mm-hmm. No, not dice, not not battling with cards, but you're battling with cubes. Yeah. Um, but I think it's the theme that just hits off that Probably samurai so. theme with yeah. everyone. A lot of people like that. I know that's big on Chester's really into that part of it. So uh, he he wants to introduce it to a couple other guys that that he's bringing into the hobby. So he's excited to introduce them to it. So uh, we're going to be playing uh, Lord of the Rings um, uh, this Friday night, actually. And he was asking if I could get a copy from somebody. So I told him I didn't know if we should get into both of those, the Lord of the Rings, uh, the scenario that we're going to play. Uh, second scenario, it's probably going to be... I can't remember the second one. I, I think maybe an hour and a half. And then, I think that was one of the first longer ones because okay, the first one yeah. was more of a learning mm. the mechanisms of the game. Yeah. And the second one really got you in. Yeah, I told him between that and then Shogun, I don't know. That'd be a long night um, at, uh, at Cool Stuff Games. We're planning to meet up there in, in Brandon, uh, Florida. But, uh, yeah, so we'll probably pass on that this week but uh, i know he's itching to get that back to the table but yeah i think a really an underrated game shogun is uh, uh at least in our group has been a huge hit and uh like you say everybody's talking about it everybody's picking up copies of it we're, we're talking about even doing like a tournament yeah i mean we yeah. have enough copies to be able to do right uh, a four table tournament yeah, four probably get each one get 16 people and get but, the winner from each and then yeah, battle royale and then play one more and yeah. have, have a champion yeah Speaking of champions, you know. Yeah. That, <laughs> See that over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's eyeballing you. Yeah, it's the first time I've seen it. it. Yeah, it's been a couple of months, but yeah. yeah from the last meetup. Yep. Um, yeah. It's the it's the the plate, the, the placard, the yeah, the plate that <laughs> says right here, 2019 Crokinole Championship. Yeah. Rob Childers. Woo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to get plastered on my crocodile board. Awesome. I that can't wait to our, get that sucker mounted on there. <laughs> our first uh, official tournament of the group for yeah. a game. I think Shogun might end up being a second yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. official tournament. Uh, although I think Nick wants us to do a uh, Twilight Imperium 4 oh, really? uh, tournament. <laughs> okay, uh, well, that may be over the course of several months. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, unless you're just going to do a one shot. But we got enough guys that uh, well, it plays up to, what, five now? Uh, five five. in the yeah. I'm I'm waiting for the expansions for that. I keep hearing that they everybody keeps saying that they've got to you know TI four or TI three was the last version. We're on four now. Okay, TI three had all those expansions and had extra extra players and all that as they did the expansions. So they they that's got to be. I'm okay with. No, you the don't want to go there. Yeah, you don't want to go there. There's a lot of content in there. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of game. I want to get yeah. it back to the table. Yeah. I just don't know if we can do a championship with that one. Yeah, but I think Shogun might. Yeah, might sure be one we could try. Yeah, we could probably do that a lot quicker. So that's good. I, I introduced uh, some of the name the new gamers to Biblios. Oh yeah, Biblios. Yeah, that's a good um, one. That that is a. It's actually on the shelf. Um, yeah, right there next to the band game. Uh, Biblios is is a it's an auction game. Um, it let me pull up my BGG here. Oh yeah, I know this makes for great radio. Yeah, check out the ratings. <laughs> it was a it was a recent purchase for me this last year. 
2007 game. Well, that's what we played a lot, though. I mean, from the time you bought it, we, we've been playing that uh, when we get together. Uh, we I know at Simon uh, Expo, we played it several times. Over. We every time we ate. Meals. Yeah, every, every time we ate. <laughs> every it's time a, we I ate. mean, the game is perfect yeah. for uh, playing in a small space. Yeah. I think we played it at a, at a burger joint yeah. in Orlando. We played it at the food court in Georgia. Yeah, or we played at the varsity. I can't remember in Georgia, but uh, yeah, we played we played that a lot of places. Usually, we order and then any kind of sit down restaurant, we we pull out bibliotes and and play a few. I know we played it um, at the hotel uh, with the guys yep. in uh, in Atlanta. Yeah, uh, designed by Steve Finn. It came out in two thousand seven, so it's got some time on it. Yeah, it's been out there a while. Uh, I mm. I hadn't heard of it twelve and years. So it was mm. it was great to finally hear about it because I, I was surprised as to how good it was. Mm. Uh, it, it's got a 7.2 rating on the BGG. Oh, that's good. Uh, overall, uh, 329. Oh wow, well, that's good. You know, anything in BGG in the top thousand is is really a game that <laughs> just about anybody would want to play. So, yeah, but but at the end of the day, I mean, you, you look at the 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 price. I mean, it's I think it was anywhere between 20 and 30 bucks. You can find this thing. Yeah, not bad for a, for a great game. So yeah. you start off in in a uh, gifting phase where you take the entire deck of cards and you distribute them out to everybody. So everybody then, so we've got this huge deck of cards, and we now have distributed all the cards out. And then at that point, once you have all your cards in your hand, there's a stack left that you auction off. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're bidding for control of five dice that are on the table. Yeah, it's the kind dice, of set collection, five, colored. Yeah, yep, by colors. Yeah. By color. Mm-hmm. Uh, the five dice are start set at three points of value each, and yeah. they can move up or down depending on some of the cards that you play. Yep. And then you move into an auction phase, and this is when the game gets fun. Because mm-hmm. in the first half of the game, you're trying to give in a strategic way so that you end up with what you want, and then what you also want ends up in the auction pile for later, and then hopefully give the garbage out to the players on the board. Uh, and so every, every player gets a chance to give away, and we go around and around giving away cards. Uh, but in the auction phase is when it gets fun, because you know what kind of stuff you put in the auction deck. Yeah, and then you take the cards that you have left in your hand, and now becomes the bidding part. And if you've got a good memory, you can uh, you can remember somewhat the order of cards that are in that uh, that deck, the auction deck that you put in there. You have to have a better memory than me. I usually remember maybe the first card I put in there, or the last card I put the in there. The last few, yeah, last couple, just so you know, uh, you know what may you want to jump on early, or may, what you may need to wait until uh, the end of the auction phase because the first ones you put in are the last ones that come back out. So. Um, so yeah, last in, first out. Yeah, yep. Little strategy there, and so, uh, so definitely some memory would help out there. But yeah, it's a good game, real good game, real simple, simple rules, but easy, easy to learn, uh, difficult to master. It's fun so, to watch the bidding, yeah. and because it, it reminds me of like a, a an eBay uh, bidding. Yeah, you know, or, or you're thinking you got it, you're just gonna bid it. Yeah, high, everybody wants to jump in at the end. Somebody else jumps <laughs> in on you, and you're like, what? Yeah. You, you don't have that much gold. Yeah, you can't afford that. And then they start dropping that gold on it, and find you know, come to find out that was enough to get them control of that one die, mm. that gave them the win. And there's the possibility of the bluffing in that uh, game, although we haven't seen a lot of that in uh, our I, plays. I did it twice. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So you can uh, arbitrarily uh, bid somebody else up, and and then if you don't have it, the penalty is what everybody gets to take a card out of everybody your hand. Everybody takes a so, card out of your hand <laughs> at random. So the penalty is pretty rough if you get caught, if you uh, get left with it, and you can't pay for it. So uh, so you might want to call me on it one time. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll definitely play it if I know you're, it is you're my doing strategy. that. Yeah, playing that game. Like, okay, I know you want it. I can't uh, afford it, uh, but I'm going to make you pay more uh, for it. Well, I've, so I'll I, bid four. I haven't done much I'm of going that, four. so yeah, it's a little risky. <laughs> That's fun, but yeah. And then I know y'all played Ethnos, also oh, one yeah. of my. That's another one of my all-time favorites. But. I forget how good that game is. Oh, it is, yeah. it is such an ugly game. Well, that's uh, everybody says that, but I don't on, know. It's man. not that bad. It's come on. It is what it is. It's it's not about the art in that one. It's it's or, or I should say, come on, you could have done, <laughs> <Yeah. Okay? Simon, laughs> done better. Okay, Simon, come on, you could have done better. Yeah. But uh, I know y'all started that before I got there, so I didn't get to jump in. All you had, what was it, six playing it? We did. So, yeah. We had a full house. I think it maxes out at six. And you played with the fairy uh, yes, promo. Yes, we made sure because I, I picked up the game at the Come On Expo yep. uh, 2019. This past, was it April? Uh, yeah, it was definitely, yeah, it was a- right April, I think, yeah. Of this year yeah. at uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Yep. And when you bought the game, because you went up there just for this fairy's expansion. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to buy the expansion, but. But what, what we found out is you have to buy the board game to be, get, be able to get the expansion. Yeah, they required you th- at, at the at the expo to buy that, and the only way they were giving away the fairy uh, expansion was with a purchase of the base game, so I was bummed about that. But you picked it up, so. And, and I didn't want, you know, I, it wasn't a game that was really on my list because it was so mm-hmm. ugly. Yeah. 
The well, components are ugly. The board uh, is ugly. Yeah. The art artwork can help, is but... okay. <laughs> art can help make a good game better, but I, I don't think it really takes away. Not for me, at least. See, BGG but... says it's a, 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 a published in 2017. It's got a 7.5 rating. Oh, that's good. It's a two to six players, 45 to 60 minutes, which we can attest. That's about right. Yeah. That's about right. Um, and it's a weight of a 2.02. Which okay. is about right. So that's a little, yeah, it's a little lighter than than midweight. Yeah, but I, would I, agree I think it feels that way. Yeah, like I, I thought about teaching it to the kids. Yeah, it's easy to easy to teach. Uh, again, that one doesn't. Uh, you know, you got the old easy to teach lifetime to master. I wouldn't say lifetime to master in that one. I mean, it's light enough that you can just kind of play. So yeah, yeah and, and enjoy. And what do the fairies do? I got you. Got to remind me. I can't remember what the fairy faction oh, did. Overall rank. Oh yeah, go ahead. What do you think? Overall, um, I would say around two hundred. You're right, two thirty-one. Oh wow, okay, that's good. right on the button. That's yeah. pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah. I didn't look. Are you looking at my screen? No, no, no. I should have. <laughs> two thirty-one. That's that's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that, that it's, is really uh, good. One fifty-three for strategy games. I would say for a light game like that, that is really good. BGG, I think, tends to skew a little more towards mid to heavier weight. So yeah. Well, it, it it's a game that for me, what I what I like about it is the area control component. Yeah. Because you know you get the island and you're trying to control the different regions, so it kind of gives me my my dudes on a map feeling. Yeah. Right. But it has that set collection. I like the set collection card play. Uh, yeah. It reminds me of Ticket mm-hmm. to Ride. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, definitely. I get a little Ticket to Ride feel in there. So that's where I feel like the lightness comes from. Yeah. I can see yeah. that. That makes sense. Yeah. Fairies. Fairies for fun because fairies allow you to, when you play a band, so in the game of Ethnos, uh, you're collecting cards to play down as a band. So yep. uh, multiple cards is one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can play uh, one race. right? So if all the cards are the same race, that's a band. Okay. You know, maybe five yeah. cards, uh, five dwarves is a band of five, or you can do all of the same color, right? So the green, and maybe they're all one different, ra- they're all different, different races, races yep. but they're all the same color. That's a band, right? The fairies say when you play a band, look around the table and pick another band of the same size, swap your f- band with that band, and play that band as if it came from your hand. Oh, wow. So <laughs> <laughs> so those you want to kind of hold off maybe a little bit because you, you want to wait till some stuff is down that well, you that's, want. That was Evan. Ah. Evan was over there, and we're watching him collect cards, and he's getting up because the hand size is 10. <laughs> 10 he's yeah. getting up to 10 mm. cards in his hand, and we're ah. waiting on Evan <laughs> to feed. Because any, anything, when you yeah. play the band, everything else left in your hand goes into the market for everyone else. And we're waiting for the market to fill up, asking Evan, what's going on? Yeah. And finally, somebody played a band of five. Oh, and Evan's it. like, that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> Here's my five fairies. I'm taking uh, your band. Well done. Right? Yeah. <laughs> However, his band of five fairies, if I remember correctly, Turned were into? three fairies with two skeletons. Oh, okay. Right, So you get points based on how many uh, cards are in that band. Well, yep. skeletons dissolve right. before the point collection. Right. So he took a band of five, which I think is worth like nine victory points. It's at least, yeah. And turned it into a band of three for scoring purposes to the other player, uh, which is worth three victory points. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so messed them over, took theirs, uh, their good ones, so... And then he got, and then you get to do the ability of the, and then you the trigger one you the took. ability of the one you took. Ah, sweet. So, and that, and suddenly that aha moment that everyone had. Ah, uh, sneaky. And next thing you know, <laughs> everyone's playing fairies huh. to try to, and, and playing fairies in that way. Oh, I'm yeah. going to take fairies and skeletons to help add more points to my side and take them away from your side. I'm glad yeah. we played the fairies. Well done, Evan. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> that was smart. So he, uh, and he's a fairly new gamer too. I don't think he's been really gaming all that long. So, But he's bright. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen him play guy. Wingspan. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we, we played, I ended up winning Ethnos. Oh, did you? Yeah. I was going to ask who I won. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was surprised. Oh, that's good. You don't normally win that. I no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a strategy guy. There you go. It's, I play it by my gut. Yeah, well, it worked. <laughs> it, goes, it goes from my, my yeah. gut. Especially when the game is six, that's uh, pretty competitive. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it was uh, well, you know, it's. I hate saying this. Um, Renato is a, oh, yeah. is a newer gamer. Uh-huh. Uh, Renato sat on my oh, right. Oh, he was feeding you. Uh. It's like dominoes, man. It's yeah. like mm. it's like dominoes or or mm. any other game where the person to your right makes really impacts your ability to play your game. If if mm. if they're not watching what you're doing and doing things to help help themselves, but also not help you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it lets you play the game. Yeah, you always got any kind of card drafting, card taking game like that. You got the the possibility of the hate draft and the hate takes. And so, if you know well, somebody's going for something, you got to stop. If you got them. somebody on yeah. one side of you, oh, and yeah. they're just feeding yeah. you the good cards. That's a classic example. Yeah, 
Blood Rage can so make all the I difference. Really, so. I, I'm not mm-hmm. saying that I won the game, and I'm not saying that Renato won it for me, but I think a combination of the two Hell. led to me actually getting a victory. Well, of course, yeah. Here and there. <laughs> so that was Ethnos. Yep. Uh, that that's all I played at, at yeah, that event. Yeah, I think that what was it. Uh, I just that one game in Pearl yeah, Settlers. Yeah, I just played Imperial Settlers, and then I had to head out, so we did that in the gift exchange, and then I watched y'all finish up with Ethnos. But uh, yeah, that was yeah. We left when the it. the group moved into Shogun is when I left. Yeah, yeah, me too. I think we left around the same time, and that sh- uh, Shogun usually about what three about three hours. So it's a, it's a pretty good game. So uh, I think it was a full table again. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they had it. Uh, I think it was probably was it six in that one, yeah. five or six. But uh, and yeah. they played with the expansion. And yep. They talked about how much fun the expansion was. I haven't played the expansion yet. I haven't either. Yeah. So I've got to try that out sometime. And then I know Will's like I said, Will just picked up the big box version of it. So kind of a deluxe version. I think so he's I want to see a couple that. of expansions in there. Yeah, I think so. I think there's a couple. Even though I only thought there was one, but maybe there may be one that maybe only comes out with the big box. I'm not sure. So. Uh, well, anything else you've been up to? Uh, what was, well, I don't know. Next, we'll, maybe we talk about uh, Undaunted. Uh, our, no, our we'll, yeah, we'll here. finish up with Undaunted. I got, oh. I got my list of things I bought. Oh, okay. Well, I, I got that too. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and, um, I picked up uh, the Midgard, Champions of Midgard, the okay. uh, Mountains expansion. Mm-hmm. Um, Amazon had a special on it, so I figured it would just be nice to round out my collection. That's the other expansion for Champions of Midgard, as if, the as, other. Uh, yeah, as, as most people would attest. The, the last uh, one to buy. Yeah, the one you've got to have is Valhalla. That's the one that really makes the, the big difference. when I bought the game. Right. I picked up Valhalla. Right, that was the one that, yeah, the, you, if you're really going to get into that game, Valhalla's the one. Uh, uh, the mountains kind of give you more of the same. I think it adds uh, another, is it one or two different types of dice in that one? One. Is you it one the more? Hunters, the okay. Green Hunters. So it was two that came in, in Valhalla, I think, uh, in then, uh, I think it is mostly more of the same. Yeah, yeah, it's more cards, more things to do. You've got the mountain area that you can go visit and get some monsters cards up that way. So, uh, but doesn't so doesn't really fundamentally change the game. Feels good. Feels good to have Champions of Midgard complete. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Anytime you can you can finish it off and have all the all the stuff for it. It's a good thing. So I yeah. picked up the uh, ordered the new Gaslands Refueled book. Okay. So Gaslands is the Osprey game, tabletop miniatures game. Where you take and you paint Hot Wheel cars, Hot Wheel cars, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and you glue guns onto them, mm. and then you use templates <laughs> like X Wing to move around the board and shoot each other. Yeah. Um, so the the new edition came out. Uh, I'm introducing some friends this weekend to it. Cool. Uh, my son, who is uh, tw- twelve years old, uh, my friend's son Mikey. Well, Mikey, a member of our group. Yep. No. His son is twelve, so we were we're gonna bring him in. Uh, we're gonna bring some of uh, Mikey's family and cousins. The younger kids, and we're just going to set up a four by four table and play some gas lands on Friday night. Uh, the kids are having fun, uh, as, as I understand it. They're all at home gluing GI oh, Joe yeah. guns to Hot Wheels, <laughs> working to on bring their them cars over on Friday. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a, I think it's a fun way to introduce younger folks to war gaming. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely more your alley with the war gaming. Um, so I know we, we played at uh, at the Dice Tower. Uh, convention. David Carlton did a, a David, demo day. Yep, for David that. taught us or taught me how to play. You had played several times before, but he kind of really introduced me. You had told me about it, but uh, that was the first time I had sat down and actually played. Had the templates, and uh, I know there's a couple different modes you can do, like a race mode, and yes. then there's a battle royale mode. I think we yep. played the battle royale there, and and uh, we got most. But there's of the way also through it. A, a zombie mode. Oh, really? I haven't heard of that. You so. take uh, <laughs> little zombie miniatures and you put them all over the board. Oh, nice. And then you get points for running a mower. Just run them down? It's yeah. like death race. <laughs> You're still shooting each other, or is it yes. all about the yeah, zombies? Yeah, oh, okay. you still got to okay. shoot each other, okay. but you, okay. you want to get some points by running uh, over some zombies. Get some bonus points. I mean, mm. You got to tell me that doesn't sound like fun. I mean, oh, that no. That sounds yeah. like fun. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Do the zombies move at all, or are they stationary? No, they're pretty much stationary. Okay. So all right. just, you're just hoping to grab a few while shooting down the enemy. But I guess with the templates and stuff and the drift and all that, it's not a given that you can just right. run them over. You got to you gotta get a little lucky. So, okay. So I'm excited about getting that, that second The second edition just clarified some rules. Oh, okay. Cleaned up the artwork. Mm. You know, made it pretty. Not, not a big change. So I'm still reading my first edition rules until they come in. Okay. Uh, I also picked up... Uh, for Flames of War, the World War II 15 millimeter miniatures game, I picked up the uh, Americans uh, book. So D Day America, which is all the American forces. Uh, Zeno and I have been playing tanks uh, okay. by the same company, Gale Force Nine. Uh, so it's all World War II miniatures tanks. But uh, yeah. Flames of War takes it up a notch by adding infantry and artillery and and air cover uh, to 15 millimeter World War II game. Um, I picked up uh, Undaunted Normandy since we've last oh. been on. Okay. And that's what we'll talk about. Just a minute, uh, yeah. In, in a minute on the on how we played. And then I picked up Cruel Seas. Um, that's um, a game by 
uh, Warlord Games, the same company that does Bolt Action. Okay, yeah. Uh, I it's played a, that. a miniatures game, naval miniatures game, but it's not like the World War II uh, giant destroyers and cruisers battling out on the seas. This is this is all the battles that occurred on the coast with the small boats shooting each other with machine guns and torpedoes and mm. and uh, the same kind of boats that uh, JFK. Uh, yeah, well, your boats and yeah. yeah. So it, it's we play. I played it once with Zeno and and found it to be very, uh, very simulation um, for me. A lot, yeah, yeah. a lot going on. So yeah. it, 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 I guess my brain's getting older and it's getting harder <laughs> to process. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, you get old like me. But uh, does that have submarines in it at all? Or they, you can have a U boat, but it, it's it's only uh, some um, surfaced surface. Oh, okay. U-boats. So you can't uh, can't. Submerged. Right, so there's not a sub, there's no don't have submerging rules yet, but so you can have a, a surface U boat. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So but it it's it got me watching history yeah. on the PT boats and the mortar torpedo boats, also known as MTBs. Um a big part of history that I really didn't know about. You know, MacArthur yeah. uh was was shuttled off of the islands in the Pacific after they got overrun, him and his wife and his son on a PT boat. You know, and he talked about the bravery of those men in those small boats, you know, getting getting targeted by giant destroyers. JFK was on a PT boat that was uh, cut in half wow. by a Japanese destroyer uh, mm. that just went right through him. And just that's how through. he ended up stranded on an island with the rest of his PT crew for a week, wow. you know, which is what helped bring him to fame and get him into, into the office as a president. Mm. See, that's all stuff that I just found out about it. Thanks to uh, what? Again, I never would have known. Yeah, right. So this is what I like about the the military games is yep. is the ability to pick up a little history, learn a little more about this great country we live in. Yeah, and the history of it. And well, that's no, why I like Undaunted Normandy. Yeah. So you're you're heavy into those, and uh, just real quick, a couple that I picked up just before we jump completely into Undaunted. Um, but in, in my heavy history games here, I picked up a Funko verse, the uh, Harry <laughs> Potter version. So got, uh, you, you know it has <laughs> dice in it, Robert. Uh, yeah, it's got a few. So, uh, but uh, yeah. I'm I mean, this was just one I figured uh, with the kids. I on uh, Black Friday uh, we d- we ventured out, and uh, although Black Friday was not anything like it has been in the past for us this year, uh, I know the news was reporting that it was uh, the crowds were way down. A lot of more people doing a lot more online, but uh, we've been out every year, probably for the last six or seven years on Black Friday, just uh, mostly to observe uh, me and the. Uh, the the whole family, the wife and the three kids, usually they go all out. Get up early too. Yeah, yeah. We all stay up. Well, we stay up till uh, midnight or one or two in the morning, and we usually just go out. And we've uh, just it's been kind of a tradition thing. And uh, it, we mostly, like I said, we don't really go out intending to take advantage of any big deals or anything. We just go out and watch people and and see that. And uh, this year it was it was really uh, the crowds were half of what they have been in the past. We didn't see anything crazy. Didn't see anybody trying to run anybody over. It was uh, it was really light. But uh, there was a few good deals. Uh, I think a lot of it now, the, the big deals are really moving online. But uh, over at GameStop, they had uh, 40% off of all their games, all board games. And so that's where we were in there. And uh, we went in there to look for a video game for my son. And uh, while we were in there, I noticed the sign for 40% off the board game. So I jumped over there and uh, found uh, the Funko verse. They had every one of the expansions. I think there's uh, three sets now with the uh, two characters in them. And then there's the two golden base girls. ones. Uh, there's the Golden Girls. There's a Rick and that's Morty. Real. Yeah, yeah, that's that's real. And uh, they got Rick and Morty, and they've got uh, there's a Harry Potter uh, expansion that has two more characters in it. I got the base with four characters. Comes with one of the boards. How much did you get it for? Um, it was about twenty five bucks, and it wow. goes for forty. So uh, yeah, like I said, it was I think it was forty percent off, and so that was a good deal. I, I wouldn't have got it if it wasn't forty percent off. But I uh, the, my daughter really is a big Harry Potter fan, so I jumped on that, and uh, she was excited about it. And then my son, uh, he's sixteen. Uh, it'll be kind of his first skirmish type game. It's really just uh, kind of throwing some guys on the map and, and running at each other and, and rolling some dice chucking and some dice. Yeah, chucking some dice. So yeah. it'll be it'll be fun. It's gonna be quick. Uh, I I've, haven't actually played it yet. I've seen a bunch of reviews and some playthroughs online of it, and uh, it looks like a good time. So I uh, picked that up. I want to play it. Yeah, yeah, That's we'll definitely. something we can do with Arby. I yeah. want to play that. Yeah, we'll set it up. I think 30 minutes, 45 minutes at the most, those uh, games are over, so they go real quick, so we can play a few times. And if we like it, uh, again, we can pick up all those expansions, and uh, I'm really interested in the Golden Girls. So, uh, yeah, i got to get them <laughs> okay, in Okay, Blanche. Calm <laughs> yeah, down, Blanche. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. And I think her uh, her special ability is a uh, a cheesecake. Yeah, that, it was a cheesecake. Yeah, that's it. So that's her uh, her special weapon. So, uh, And then the other one I picked up. One, they, I, they all cross together, right? 
Uh, you yeah, can, they, yeah. You can mix and match. Like you, can, you can have Harry Potter throwing spells. Yeah, throwing cheesecakes. Actually, you can oh, give him. Oh, yeah, okay. you can give him Blanche's cheesecake and do it that way. So, uh, yeah, each of them have their own little special abilities for the character. Their special weapons have abilities. Sounds very thematic. I like yeah. that. And they have a uh, the thing about it. It takes it a little more than just a quick skirmish game. Is uh, they uh, each of the weapons or each of their abilities have a cooldown time. So when you do their ability, you have a token uh, for the cheesecake or whatever, or the uh, the wand or whatever, and you put it on a a three-step cooldown track, and if it's a if it's a basic one, it just goes on the one, and then the, after one turn, it comes back, and you can play it again. If it's one of the more powerful or more complicated ones, it may go on the three, and you have to wait several turns for it to clear and to come back into your hand so that you can use it again. So there is a little strategy, and it is a little more than than just. I'm down. Yeah, you yeah. sold me. Oh yeah, all right, that's that's good. So so. I was looking at Unmatched. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, that's something I was in. There was a lot of comparisons from Unmatched to yeah uh, to the Funkoverse. Yep. No, but Unmatched has no dice. Yeah, and I think this is maybe Unmatched Light. Again, this is a little quicker, a little easier. Um, uh, I, I'm hoping the kids really like it. They were excited about it. So a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old, I think. Uh, I think I can get them into it. So I, All right, we've got to get together uh, my, my 12-year-old and yeah. yours. How many players? For sure. Uh, it, it's really a two-player game, although each game has four characters, so it's two against two, so you can play. Each person can take one and uh, and just play one against But if it's quick uh, enough, you can cycle people through. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So And then I don't know, with the expansions, I don't believe you can, you can add more, although there's, what, a total of four, eight... 9, 10, 11, 12, 14 characters out there. So I don't know. We could probably alter the rules a little bit and play more characters and... And uh, yeah, battle royale. Like yeah, there you go, big battle royale. The other one I picked up, uh, just as one that I've been looking at for probably a year now, is the uh, the choose your own adventure, House of Danger, the original one. I picked uh, it up, looked uh, at it. I have a lot of read times the back, <laughs> put it back. Yep, five or six times. Yep, I kept looking at it, and then it's always been like twenty nine ninety nine. I'm like, ooh, I don't know if it's worth thirty bucks when there's so many other games I can get for thirty bucks. I picked that up at Target, and I believe that was fifty percent off at Target. I think I got it for about fifteen bucks. And I said, you know what, I'm I'm gonna get it. That's and, a solo uh, game, though, right? Uh, no, no, no. It's uh, it's multiplayer. You can play up to four. There's a little board uh, that you actually each of you has a pawn that you move around. Uh, it is cooperative. You're trying to okay. To so go I can play your story. Copy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. From what I understand, uh, um, it's just like the old Choose Your Own Adventure books that I grew up with uh, uh, reading That's back in the, all I read in middle oh, yeah. school in the, in the 80s and the 90s. And from what I understand from the reviews I've heard of it, there are things where you make the the quote unquote right choice. You know, the obvious choice and and it would seem like the only choice, and then it runs into some ridiculous ending, and then you get knocked back, and you have to go back and, and do part of it over Feels again. Like Lord of the Rings. So yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, Lord of the Rings was was a little bit of that. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward to that though, because that was my youth uh, reading those books, and oh, yeah. everybody I think stuck their fingers in yeah, on the different pages I, and went, <laughs> went back and forth. Nope, nope, not doing that. We're going back. <laughs> exactly. You take a peek ahead and see if it uh, if it ended well Gosh, for you. Really or ended too many bad games for you, though. That, so. I, I want to play that because that oh, was yeah. on my list. But yeah, well, that's again, that's a quick one from what I understand. And there's okay. chapters in that, and so you can go through, I think it's like four or five or six chapters, so you don't have to do it all in one shot. You can kind of play through a little bit at a time. So and I think each of the chapters, from what I understand, is not real long, maybe 30 minutes uh, a shot. So well, it's, Now I'm uh, feeling better, and it's, yeah. it's, as long as this holds, I'll, yeah, we'll, we'll make we'll it a thing. To the table. Yeah, and I want to try that with the kids, too. I think, uh, again, I want to introduce them to that, because that was my youth. Uh, I, I enjoyed those as I a just, kid. So. I just, uh, you mentioned that game, and I yeah. don't think I've ever mentioned it to you once. Oh, no, You have no, no idea how many times I've picked it up. Oh, I have too. Read it online. <laughs> yeah, and it just never. Yeah, you know, it, it just doesn't look like a game that a gamer would be attracted no. to. No, it just too many other games to pull my attention. And everything I've seen on it, everybody's everybody seems to like it. Nobody raves about it. Nobody overly loves it. But I haven't really heard anybody that's played it or reviewed it that disliked it. So. uh uh, and then the second one just came out. I forget the name of the second one, but just came out maybe three, four months ago. And so I'm hoping I'll like this one and maybe uh, pick up the second one and play through both of them. So, Danger House, is that what you said? Uh, House of Danger. House of Danger. Yeah, House of Danger. Choose your own adventure, uh, semicolon, House of Danger. Okay. But uh, should we jump over? I'm mean, going to hinting at uh, Undaunted. Undaunted. That's the game. Oh, what else did you get? Yeah, we else? No, just those two. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like your list there well, of, of I, heavy I games. I found a couple so, uh, more. Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> well, at least one more. Oh, okay. I ordered uh, a new pitch for Blood Bowl. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. I had picked up, it's over there in the corner, the vinyl pitch. So uh-huh. it, it's got the uh, score trackers and the dugouts all built into a nice vinyl mat. Hmm, okay. Um, but then I've heard about this version of Blood Bowl called Sevens where you play with the same rules as Blood Bowl, 
except for it's only seven players on the pitch, and the pitch is much smaller. Hmm. The game is only played to six turns instead of eight, so it takes normally two and a half hours to play Blood Bowl. You get down to an hour oh, wow. in Blood Bowl 7s. Big difference. But it allows you to play with all the rules of Blood Bowl, hmm. so it's come to find out it's a great way to teach Blood Bowl. And so it's not, it doesn't have the league aspect that Blood Bowl Original has, where you grow a team and you add skills to them and they yeah. take injuries. Sure. But it allows you to play the game, learn the rules, and enjoy it in, in a much faster time frame than if I were to try to teach you, which oh, yeah. I, I have tried. Oh, yeah. To I mean, teach we, we you Blood times, Bowl. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's the sevens pitch is on its way, so that'll be, I think, my better way to introduce folks into the Blood Bowl world. Okay. That's yeah. the last purchase I think I can Yeah, you think you you'll think of some again in a few minutes, I'm sure. But <laughs> Undaunted Normandy. Uh, yeah. We, I think we just got our probably our fourth game of it. Uh yeah, we played the first day we opened it, uh, which was a couple weeks back. Um we uh we played the first scenario, I think, twice, and you beat me both times. And then we uh, jumped ahead just to... Uh, it, it adds the, the scenarios uh, in the back of the book. I believe there's 12 scenarios. And the scenarios, uh, as you go through them from 1 to 12, each one adds another uh, either unit or concept or uh, a, a piece of strategy for it. And so uh, I know after we played that uh, introductory one, the first one, a couple times, you wanted to kind of jump ahead just to kind of see what else the, the meat of the game was. I think we jumped up to the fourth, machine or, guns. fourth or fifth That's one. Yeah. what I said. <laughs> Added machine guns. Can, can we get to the machine guns? <laughs> yeah, so we jumped up and played that and you beat me again so uh we decided uh, that uh, there is a kind of a kind of a campaign it's not uh um they don't carry over too much from one game or if, if the any scenarios from, do know. run in chronological order because this follows the 30th infantry division uh that land that went into to normandy and yeah. that's what it follows from their initiation in june 15th uh in normandy through uh, uh through the their campaign so it's chronological, but it's not a campaign like we're used to. With, right. Where one game influences or yeah, the influences next. The next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So you just play as many of them as you want. We decided to play all of them, as which is going to be our campaign. Yep. Uh, I, I the campaign allows you the way you score the campaign at the end is uh, for every victory you got you get one point, and then for every ten men that you lose overall throughout the entire campaign right. you lose a point right right so those are cumulative yeah uh, and to give you an idea the, i got the win tonight in our uh, first official it was pretty competitive game. tonight though yeah i think i i did but uh, how many casualties did you get on me uh well i killed was it 10 of you or no seven seven seven, seven. sorry seven of yours three of mine dang near 10 10 total yeah dang yeah. near 10 yeah. <laughs> so, so you you got a point for the win but you almost lost a point for the casualties right so. Yeah. That after that game, it kind of stood out for me as to the the, the campaign. I think is going to be fun because, yeah, you can win. What is it going to cost? Well, yeah, lives are precious. You gotta right. uh, you can't just throw guys at the problem. So, but, uh, but the, yeah. the 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 design of the game also establishes that. Now, the names in the game are not based on historical figures, but they did name every card. Yeah, a period specific name. So every card that you play in that game to do something with your riflemen or your machine gunners has a picture and a name of a different soldier. Yeah. So every time you lose a life, it's and we ask, we say, yeah, we hey, called him out. Yeah. Who was that? Yeah. Who, what uh, was that oh, guy's that, name? That was yeah. Ziegler. Yeah. Ziegler's dead. <laughs> you know? So we memorialized him as we as we threw him in the box. Yeah. yeah. I think Herbert ended up getting recognition uh, for yeah. our last game. Yeah. At the last uh, game, you Cromer, nominate Herbert yeah. Cromer. You nominate a, a player who had uh, some heroic deed during the game, and you write their name in the back of the book. So yeah. But, but like you said, every life is precious, and it makes you feel that in the game because you're. You're not playing with just generic pictures. These are each person has its name. It's almost like Blood Bowl, yeah. where you name every character on the field. Yep. So you kind of want to see them do well. Um, it, it in this game has really found a sweet spot for you and I. So, yeah. um, a 2019 mm-hmm. game. Uh, it's a it's a deck building war game. Right. Uh, so far, it's got an 8.1 on BGG. Wow, not bad. And it's ranked uh, 1126 overall for a new game. That's really good. But it's ranked 78 in war games. Yeah, I mean, think about how many war games. War games have pretty much started the board gaming world. Yeah, for the most part, and to be ranked 78 out of all those other war games says a lot. And again, it's only been out a couple months, maybe. Yeah, and I think it's because of the the ability to to give me Carlos the war gamer mm-hmm. the feeling of you're playing a war game, but allow you Robert the Euro gamer. Mm-hmm. The ability to enjoy uh, a strategic game, 
Mm. Uh, a thinky game. You're over here counting my cards. You you told me how many <laughs> units I had left in my deck. Yeah. I didn't even know how many units uh, I had left in my deck. Yeah. Uh, because you're paying attention to all those details where I'm focused on, I, I got to get my rifleman over to that farm. Yeah, I was going to say, we definitely played different strategies, and that was the thing that really... Uh, showed up in this one that really was a eye opener for me. The first couple times we played, it was we you know we were still learning stuff, but it seemed to me like there were some pretty clear, obvious ways to go about uh, playing it and, and winning. Uh, although this time I really saw the difference. I mean, you really went after objectives. You tried to to move guys to the right places to take the points, which you eventually did get the win. Um, but then I was spending most of my actions and most of my time. Uh, obviously, slaying, <laughs> killing your guys off, which uh, you took hopefully, out a whole squad. Yeah, hopefully, which will benefit me uh, again for that. Every ten, you lose a point. Six so. riflemen all gone. Yeah, yeah, wiped out one whole one whole group there. So. And you were starting to work on the second group of riflemen. Yeah, riflemen are the only type of units in the game that can control objective points. Right. So Robert's strategy was get rid of the riflemen, and that'll reduce Carlos's ability to control objective points. Now, uh, the way the game works is as a as a deck building game, you start off with uh, just a couple of riflemen from squad A and a couple of riflemen cards from squad B. And you start off with one scout from squad A and one scout from squad B. And you're going to shuffle your, your deck. There's some fog of war cards in there, which are burner cards that do nothing yeah. effectively. And then when you draw to play, the cards that you draw is is what you use to move and control objectives and shoot with the units that are on the board. So every time Rob shot and hit and you roll dice dice baby yeah uh, when you roll dice <laughs> and you hit rob was going after my rifleman squad b so every time he hit i would have to take a rifleman card out of my hand or discards or draw deck and take it completely out of the game and that's when mm. we would name the character who passed away yeah and put him out in into the box he's gone from the game so from now on when i reshuffle my deck that is a less effective squad to be able to control objectives. Right. Um, and once you've removed all the cards that are available, and there's only six cards for each for each rifleman squad, uh, once all six are gone, that token's going to come off the board, and, and there you go. They're, yep. they're done. And one additional piece of the strategy there is uh, all of the cards have a initiative number on them, and the first thing you do each round after you draw up to four, four cards, cards, yeah, uh, is you, one of those four cards has to be played and burned and put in your discard pile just for the initiative. So obviously, as you can imagine, the uh, the guys with the higher initiative that might get you the uh, to ability to act first that round are the ones who have the, probably the best actions on them. So. You have this decision, do you burn a card that's a low initiative and uh, and maybe go second, let the other guy act first, um, but maybe, uh, in that case, throw away a uh, Fog of War always is a one initiative, so you just throw away a Fog of War card. So yeah, one that, initiative and does yeah, nothing else. Right, and then and just get rid of it out of your hand, or do you really want to take that initiative, act first, maybe run over to a strategic point, or get the shot off before the other guy has a chance to, to use that unit? Um, yeah, there's a, a big part of the game, I think, is that initiative bid and, and uh, working on that part of it. So, yeah, and, and each each character type, each uh, um, unit type, yeah, uh, scouts, machine gunners, riflemen, squad leaders, platoon leaders, they all have different actions, actions available yeah. to them. Mm -hmm. So anywhere between two and four types of actions for each different unit, right? That they can do, but you have to pick one. So that's where you're making some tough decisions every time you play a card on, well, I can use this guy four different ways. Yeah. How do I want to use him? Yep. You know, you got your scouts, and they can scout the field mm -hmm. to be able to put scout token down on different areas of the board. Uh, your riflemen can't move into areas that don't have scout tokens on them, so you have to get your scouts out there. But every time you scout a new area, you take a fog of war card for every new area you scouted. Right. And that gets put into your discard so that next time you shuffle... There's more chance that you don't know what you're doing because it's a bunch of fog of war. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you the recon. Ability. Recon. I was gonna say, yeah. The scouts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Get rid of that fog you, of war. You do the recon a lot. Yeah, yeah. This last game, I tried that because I, I first couple times we played, we were just learning the game. You were loading me up on those fog of war cards. So uh, this time, I figured let's try to keep those to a minimum, so you can burn a scout each round if you have a fog of war card in your hand. At the same time, you can use the scout to then discard out of the game one of the Fog of War cards. So that gets it not just out of your deck, but completely out of the game for you so it won't show up later. Uh, and then you get to draw a replacement card, which can be valuable uh, if you draw the right card to help you out. But uh, yeah, Scouts I, can also do what I like, conceal. So instead of removing a Fog of War card from my hand, 
I can play one of my scouts to add a Fog of War card to your hand. Right. And there's a limited number of cards. I think there's 10 Fog of Wars. Yeah, so uh, uh, you can play that game. You did that a little bit uh, after you got them all in your hand. Then you could just kind of run around the board and scout every tile because you couldn't take any more Fog of War. So it became uh, helpful for you at that point. But yeah. Some of the other actions available to like a, a squad leader is to bolster... Mm. Uh, which allows him to take new cards from the supply because it is a deck building game. Yep. So you have a supply, yep. and each squad has the units available there. You know, so you might start off with two riflemen in your hand, but there are three available in your supply. So you can bolster and add those to your deck. So the next time you shuffle up, you've got more options for your squad. Uh, you can do a command order with your platoon sergeant, which allows you to draw more cards from the the deck when you go to play. Mm. So it just gives you more options. Uh, it, the infantry are the ones that can move and control and attack. And every time you attack, you're going to roll dice. Um, one, of, one of the things that I found a little weird, I wasn't sure how I was going to like it, was the, the attacking in this game. Oh, yeah. It, it's it's a very simple way to do it. I sure. wasn't sure how it was going to work out because it's unlimited range. Right. Uh, but it's a D10. You're rolling a, a 10-sided dice. And you normally you're going to attack for one. Uh, machine gunners attack for two. So they get two dice, and snipers attack three, and they get three dice. Um, you're looking to meet the defense value of the target. So, for example, a, a rifleman has a defense value of four. Uh, but then you look at the tile that he's sitting on, the defender. Right. And every tile has a defense value that you add to it. From zero to So you might be sitting on two, a farm, yeah. and it gives you a one. So now your riflemen have a defense of five. But then you add the range for each space that you would have to shoot from to reach the target to the defense value. So that really makes it so that, yeah, you could take that long shot. Yeah. But it's only going to be on a 10. Yeah, there's a chance. Yeah, you're, you're telling, telling me, me there's, there's a chance. chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't sure I was going to like that, but I ended up liking it. I really did yeah. like uh, the, it, it did. I mean, for the most part, most of our shooting was done very close quarters. Yeah. Because when you're looking at a, a eight, you know, a 20% chance of success on an attack, you're not going to spend your one action. Right. We have three cards that we can play each round. Yeah. You're not going to use one of those cards to take a 20% chance to hurt somebody. You're really going to do some maneuvering, Yeah, uh, get into a good position, don't leave yourself in, uh, in the open because there's a lot of zero defense value areas, like yeah. open right. uh, open grassy areas. Yep. Yep. You don't want to stay there, so you're going to move into some of the wooded areas, get some defense, and then begin attacking. Sure. So it actually, in my mind, felt like, um, it it worked like it, yeah. it gave me the feeling of what I would do in a in a war game. Yeah, there was enough strategy to it, and like you say, it it seems to have uh, scratched your itch a little bit there for the war part. There's definitely some history. Each of the scenarios I think has a little bit of a little bit of history on it, a little bit of read before it, a paragraph to kind of get you into the into the mood and the theme of it. And then on my side, it's light enough. Uh, there's uh, some thinky. I like the deck building part of it. That's fun to me. I, I've always liked deck builder games. And so making those decisions on do I add some more valuable cards to my deck? Do I uh, take some uh, Fog of War cards out of my deck? Do I attack? Do I move? Do I try to control a point? You know, there's enough decisions in there uh, to keep the strategy side of it uh, and the tactical side of it uh, pretty important. So... Uh, yeah, it's definitely got a little thinkiness to it. I know you played your turns quite a bit quicker than I did. I, I spent a little time thinking. I played by the gut. Yeah, yeah, you always have done that, and I've always tried to think it through. And again, right now you're 4-0 and against me, and I know you played a couple games against Will. Right, I introduced yeah. it to Will. Did you see the games with him were pretty similar, or did he do a different strategy on it? Or You know, I was heavily medicated. Oh, okay, so you may not remember that too much. No, because <laughs> yeah. he came and visited me last uh, week. Gotcha. Uh, during Thanksgiving week. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wanted to introduce him to it. Sure. He, he walked away saying, I want more. That's good. I yeah. want more. I want, I want. And I told him, I said, hey, what I taught you was just the introductory one. Yeah. Um, right about scenario four or five, you start to pick up machine gunners. Mm. Um, six, you get into snipers, mm. right? And then you start to get into mortars. Mortars, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So that to me sounds like fun. Our, our one game we did with the snipers I think it was a great game. I had a blast playing that game. Yeah, that was you know, fun. Your sniper started off in that area that had the building in it, yep. so I kind of mm. pictured in my head you know, the Saving the Private <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> the guy up in the, up in the tower, tower. Just yeah. shooting down, and you were just popping units like nothing. Yeah, well, yeah. you got very suppre theme suppression in there with the, uh, the, the machine, machine gunners. gunners yep. can, can suppress units to prevent them from moving. Yeah. So. Uh, mortars can target anywhere on the board except for spa uh, up, uh, 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 spaces that are 
three or farther away from it. So it can't get anything adjacent or two spaces away from it. Mm. But after that, it can start targeting anything across the board. It hits everything in the square, as you would imagine. So when the mortars come in there, it hits Friendly you and them. Yep, yep, both sides. So, so mortars sounds like fun. Yeah. But I agree with Will. I want more. Yeah. Yeah, and they're coming out with another one. You said right, Undaunted North Africa. Oh, they're working on one now, so it's going to have uh, possibly some uh, armored vehicles, tanks, and tanks. tanks. Yeah. <laughs> so that should be should be fun. It'll be interesting to see how they introduce uh, vehicles because the current one uh, doesn't have any vehicles, as far as I know. So no, it's uh, all infantry. In this infantry, one. yeah, okay. No, but it, this one looks like it has the next one looks like it has tanks in it. Mm. Uh, these are the same two designers that did War Chest. War Chest, and that's uh, what you were saying. One that I picked up at yeah. Dice Tower Convention 2019. Another really good game, yeah. Uh, we've played that a few times and really enjoyed it. Yeah, we're going to play that some more. I struggle with that one because there's no dice. Oh, So well. strategy beats me all the time. Yeah, there's an ex- at least one expansion to that we'll have to look into, too. They add some more units and things, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, so it, it, I like that they added dice to the same guys that did War Chest. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, bringing up this uh, Undaunted normally. I really think this is... I, I watched a video. Uh, Marco uh, does reviews of Wargaming. Um, a macro war gamer, I think is what his channel is on YouTube. Uh, check him out. Uh, but he said it well. He said this this is not the war game that we wanted, right? But this is the war game that we needed. Yeah. This is the kind of war games that we need to be able to continue the historical side of gaming. Bringing new people in. and Right. Yeah. Because yeah, the, the games that, that I learned 15, 20 years ago, uh, those gamers are all dying off. Yeah. All those old grognard, <laughs> old guys. Know, yeah, when you're reading through table upon table upon table of charts on, does my guy hit? Mm. Because did he have enough supplies from <laughs> the logistics group? Were there enough mm. bullets? Did I count them all? Not for me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> those those gamers That's too much. They're not being replaced. Every time I go to a historical wargaming convention, mm. there's a table now with pictures of all the guys that have died off that year oh boy so there he's marco's right this is the kind of war game we need yeah. to be able to enjoy the the history side that we do uh, but to also be able to play it with other people and then and yeah. then maybe they might be interested in trying something like tanks or heavier so war yeah something a little heavier once they get into the the fun of it yeah, well, the, the community's growing, for sure, board gaming in general. So, uh, yeah, there's no reason the, the historical combat side shouldn't be able to grow as well. But it's definitely a different uh, a different mindset. I know you've been working on me for years. and uh, It was great know. when it yeah. was just you and me. Yeah, yeah. Because you were in a prison of well, Carlos's well, yeah, games. Yeah, until my eyes opened to uh, all the other possibilities out and there. Then we made new friends. And, and, and found discovered the Euro. <laughs> it's like, What's this? Yeah, I tried to hide it from uh-huh. you. I, I kept it in a box <laughs> down low. No, no, don't, don't, Euros. No, don't look in that box. <laughs> yeah, let's play this war game. Mm. It has tanks, Rob. Yeah, well, we can we can find a happy medium, but this one right now seems to be kind of hitting that sweet spot for both of us. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Undaunted Normandy, a unfettered recommendation. Yeah, uh, from this war gamer. Two thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. Two, mm. two <laughs> thumbs up. You can't see it in the audio, but yeah, two thumbs up from me for sure. Yeah, and I think you'd say the same. Yeah, yeah. I've I've really liked it. Um, as far as war gaming and uh historical uh, gaming, combat gaming goes, it's probably one of the best ones I think I've played. So, again, overall... Twilight Struggle? I never got that into Twilight Struggle. I know we played that a couple of times. Um, I don't know what it was. and I know that's a, a, a really loved game, and it's, it was at the top of BGG for years, and uh, people loved it. I, I definitely wouldn't put it in my top ten. Um, it, it was a good game, and... Uh, I don't know. There was a lot going on in it, but I just never, I guess, never figured it out. Maybe is it because so, I always made you play the Russians? Oh, uh, could be the Soviets. Yeah. <laughs> could be. No, I don't. I don't think so. But I, uh, I, I made yeah. you the 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 Ruskies. I think that's a game that you you can really get into, and you've got to play it, and you got to know learn the cards if you really want to get into it to where you can win. You've, you've got to kind of know what the possibilities are, and it takes a lot of plays, I think, to get there. So again, I can understand that uh, why it climbed up the ranks and why it was so loved by people it was a game it was a board game that you could really uh dig into and really learn a lot of stuff and had a lot of history and stuff in it so uh maybe we just didn't play it enough for me to to get that level of appreciation so i'm pretty competitive i like to try to win and so uh that's not true yeah all right (laughs) so (laughs) but uh yeah i didn't didn't have enough plays to really uh, come up with a strategy and really get into it so 
So. Okay. Well, Undaunted allows you to do that pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, being a, a 45 minute scenario. Yeah. And then just jumping into the next one. Yeah, it doesn't have that learning curve and all. But uh, yeah, but it, uh, yeah, Undaunted's really been really been good so far. So we're going to continue. This was just game one. You uh, won again with the uh, seven casualties to my three. So I'm going to really uh, play up that side of it. Three more in the next game, and I'll uh, take away that point that you got. And uh, yeah, we'll keep you guys posted. Yeah, see if we can play through all twelve of them. Yep. All right. Well, we're getting into the holidays. Uh, I want to wish you all a, a Merry Christmas. Yeah. A, uh, a Happy New Happy Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. We'll see you again. And for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, no, thank you for for joining us, Rob. You got yeah. anything for the folks? No, I, I think that's it. I mean, uh, just keep gaming and uh, let's keep the hobby strong. We're we're growing, and uh, uh, I think more and more people are coming in all the time. We want to encourage people to to uh, to reach out uh, to just kind of grow this hobby. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Brings people together uh, in the in the world of. Uh, uh, electronic everything. Uh, I, I think uh, some some tactical board gaming, face to face time is uh, is really missing out uh, in a lot of people's lives, and I think that's why uh, people are finding about board gaming, and it's really a uh, exploding hobby right now. Is it's just a chance for people to get together face to face, especially at the time of the holidays here with uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, uh, all the other holidays that are celebrated out there. It's it's a chance just when you have the family together, uh, introduce them to something uh, light, something easy. Uh, just get their hands on a game, and uh, I think from there, uh, a lot of people will pick up the passion, and and we'll get more into it, and we'll really grow this hobby. So, yep, yep. getting so better, absolutely. Well, thanks everybody for yeah. listening to the podcast, for watching online. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, make sure you like and subscribe if you're doing this on the YouTube. Absolutely. Um, I w- picked up an account to host our podcast. So I'll be posting that information on where you can go and download the audio podcast. Cool. Uh, and we're going to keep doing this this uh, beans and dice thing. I mean, it, it's, yeah. I, I enjoy it. You enjoy it. And we want to share that joy with you all. So thanks for, for joining in. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Take care, everyone. Keep gaming. Bye. Bye.